This is the second little video about the scales, second out of three, I expect. What happens if we divide pitches into specific groups? We can make patterns of sounds. Some sound good, some sound not so good. Some are easy to remember and reproduce, and some are not. Let's go back to the idea of halves and thirds. Look at the bow. Halfway along the string, if you strike it, there's a sound produced which is the same as the string plucked open, but it's higher. I'll do it this time on the banjo so you can hear it. Sound produced at one third of the length makes a nice sound with the open string and the string plucked at halfway. Here's a string plucked open and then plucked at um, just touched at the halfway point and then touched at the one third. There's an octave that's the harmonic produced at the fifth note of the scale. So <clears throat> here's a cool fact. Sound is made by vibrations. If you hear a bee buzz, it's a funny vibrating sound. If you hear a mosquito, you hear a high whine. Both comes from vibrations in the air and of the beating of wings. The mosquito wings are much faster, so you hear a tone, not a buzz. The faster the vibrations, the higher the pitch produced. As it turns out, when you double or cut in half the number of vibrations, you get the same sound higher or lower, what we've come to call octaves. That one third point, the, what we call the fifth, is as important as the octaves. If you have sounds divided up between octave notes, you have to include a stop at the one third point, at the fifth. Why do we call it a fifth or an octave? Long ago, our ancestors in the Western world, Greece, Mesopotamia, Crete, and all, made a pattern of seven pitches which repeat again starting at each octave. In Greek, octo means eight. This pattern is what we call a scale. The fifth is the fifth pitch in that series. And that 